Hey everyone, my name is Roy and thanks so much for joining me for this really quick video on what is fascia, what is self myofascial release, and how does it all impact human movement? All right, so let's start with this thing called fascia that we've heard so much about. Fascia is a spider web of connective tissue that encompasses pretty much everything. Organs, muscles, bones, vessels, tendons, ligaments. The stuff is everywhere and it is literally all connected from head to toe, medial to lateral. Uh, if you look at the middle photo there of the orange, an analogy that I personally like is imagining the hard peel or the outside of the orange being like our skin. And then you go a little deeper and you have that white underlay on the orange. That's like our superficial fascia. You go a little deeper and you have the deeper strings within the orange. That's like our deep fascia. Then you go a little deeper and then you have our organs or our visceral fascia. And if you take a look at the photo on the right, that's the superficial back myofascial line that literally goes from head to toes. And if a restriction occurs in one area, let's say the neck, it is definitely going to have an effect in other regions, even all the way down to the feet. All right, now I do want you to ponder this as I start reading it. Um, so why is fascia so important? So is this true or false? Some of the primary functions of fascia are to uh, allow for sliding between and within muscles. Fascia lubricates tissues when sliding and gliding to produce human movement. Fascia transmits force and strain through muscle. Fascia also helps to stabilize the body and send sensory input to the brain. Absolutely all true, as I'm sure you're already imagining. Uh, again, this line is also connected to other fascial lines like the spiral line or the arm line and more. So again, I can't emphasize enough, it's all connected and every myofascial line, every part of the body impacts another. So now that we know what fascia is, how can we describe self-myofascial release, aka SMR? So first of all, myo means muscle, fascial obviously means fascia. So SMR is an intervention technique used to improve mobility and recovery of soft tissues. Um, overall, it's a very general definition, and it really does have a large impact on our nervous system through mechanoreceptors. So check this out. I really love this slide. Cool facts about fascia. You're going to really dig this. So all this is coming from the Fascia Research Society, which you can find online. It's a great resource. But I'm going to run through these really quickly, so get ready. So fascia is made up of 90% collagen and water and 10% cells. Now those 10% cells, mainly fibroblasts, they cast webs of collagen. And let's say we sit down for a long time and we get up, we feel you know a little restricted in the hips, a little tight. Part of that is definitely neurological, neuroplasticity. And part of it is those fibroblasts laying down more collagen as we're sitting there. They're constantly active. When we stand up, some of those webs literally will break and that's why it might take you know a few strides a few minutes to feel like we're mobile again number two fascia is the largest sensory organ in the body this is crazy so fascia has six to ten more times i'm sorry six to ten times more the sensory receptors compared to muscle it surrounds individual muscle cells organs bones etc stuff is everywhere like i said before imagine what it would be like if SMR was rough and digging in. You think that would send a signal to the brain that this is a threat and then the brain would send a signal to guard? Yeah, me too. So, you know, that's why less is more when it comes to pressure. Whenever you're doing self myofascial release, think less is more. Use a softer tool than you might think necessary. Number three, fascia models based on stress for movement patterns or lack of movement. So a lot of us work out front to back, right? Sagittal plane, push pull kind of stuff. This in itself is a risk of injury because fascia is multidirectional and it needs to model side to side rotation, all that multiple uh, planes of motion. So oftentimes muscle is actually in a static contraction while fascia is what provides us the, the spring, the elastic energy to move our body. 
And many injuries like pulled muscles is actually a result, often a result of connective tissue microtrauma and not actually muscle. Number four, fascia is considered to be 30 to 50% responsible for our athleticism. If this stuff interests you, you got to check out Rad Mobility. That's our signature education training platform, Rad Mobility 1 and 2. But we can train fascia. Um, there have been studies actually showing that 65-year-old people training, you know, quote unquote, the right way, have smooth moving fascia similar to a 20-year-old. So everyone needs to be training their fascia. Number five, mechanical manipulation of tissues, whether it's, you know, massage or self myofascial release, increases the flow of hyaluronic acid or HA. This is a natural... Uh, uh, the body produces this stuff naturally, and it's like oil to the engine, meaning it helps our tissues slide and glide to produce more effortless movements. So when you're doing SMR, imagine that hyaluronic acid is heating up, and then it literally liquefies and spreads and disperses throughout the area. That helps the skin, fat, fascia, and muscle slide and glide more easily, and then we obviously feel and move a lot better. All right, last one, number six. Uh, since fascia is all connected, an adhesion, like a sticky or a mobile part of the body, in one area can have a direct effect on distant locations. We already said that, but here's a cool thing. So can SMR. So take the example before. We have a restriction in the neck. We feel it all the way down in the feet. We take care of that myofascial line, uh, superficial back line. Maybe we go from the neck to the thoracic spine or mid-back down to the, you know, uh, hamstrings and calves and feet, we get that whole line because we got to go above, below, and beside the real problem areas. That way we look at the body in a holistic manner. That is what is really going to help free us up, help us move, and feel better. All right, before I leave you, I did want to make sure that you knew there are a lot of options to learn more about fascia and human movement with RAD. Uh, maybe you have questions like how can you run your own workshop or mobility and recovery classes it's all here and we do offer it in both online and in-person trainings uh, maybe you're even looking to carry some product at your studio and you have questions about wholesale accounts and the amazing prices we have on tools to get them in your clients hands either way uh, if you're interested head over to radroller.com to register for an in-person or online training of your choice and or email me at roy at radroller.com mm -hmm.